It's time for the RMAC Radio Show, featuring all the latest information from around the Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference. The RMAC is a proud member of NCAA Division II. Now, here's your host, Eric Danner. Welcome to the RMAC Radio Show. We're on location at KDUR in Durango, Colorado, on the campus of Fort Lewis College. We're going to talk to Cesar Riva Sandoval, the head coach of the Skyhawks, in just a minute or two here. First off, I want to get you caught up on some of the action around the RMAC. CSU Pueblo, still the number one team in the nation. They defeated Black Hill State this past weekend, but the game of the week was down in Las Vegas, New Mexico, Shadron State, defeating New Mexico Islands 36 33. So that was a big one. We'll have a little bit more on that later in the show. We do have three number one teams currently in the Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference, CSU Pueblo in football, Regis men's soccer, and Adam State men's cross country. Later in the show, we'll have uh, some sound from Damon Martin as Adam State just won the men's and women's RMAC cross country championships. But as we said, Cesar Riva Sandoval is our in-studio guest here today, the head coach of the Skyhawks. Coach, thanks for joining us. Oh, no problem. Thank you very much for having me. You are now in your third year as the head coach. Uh, not the season you've been looking for, I know, but uh, we're here about uh, positives, Coach. So, so let's hear some positives uh, about the football team this year. Well, you know, it, you never you never expect something like this to happen where you're having a down year with the, as far as the wins and losses like we're having right now, especially when I felt like we were growing so well. Um, after year one to year two, and then we're looking for another, you know, substantial growth to season number three. Um, but when you're growing, sometimes you're not sometimes, but in this case, we're really thin. And I said, you know, during media day, if we can stay healthy, we got a shot to be pretty decent this year. And unfortunately, we haven't stayed healthy. So we're back to kind of square one where we're playing a lot of young and new players again. And um, does that bold well for next year if we can stay healthy? Sure, it, it does. Uh, but these kids are resilient. They're awesome. They keep playing so hard. Everybody watches us on, on film knows and plays against us. They understand that um, our kids have no quit. And it's kind of a raw evolving door. They might not know who's playing against them. Uh, every week other than the Skyhawks, but as far as jersey numbers go. But um, every new kid that we keep plugging in uh, gives us everything they got, and, and um, the future bowl still bodes well. I still like what we're doing. I still believe in what we're doing. I still believe in our kids. I still believe in our football program, and uh, we'll, we'll, be, we'll point this thing in the right direction soon. Talking with Cesar Rivas Sandoval, the head football coach at Fort Lewis, and when we came here in June uh, to do the RMAC Showcase, I had a chance to talk to you. I had a chance to talk to Tim Jenkins. Mm -hmm. Again, uh, the, the record doesn't show it, but Tim's having a great year. Had the 500-yard performance against the number one team in the nation in CSU Pueblo. And, and I know for him, he, he's, he was talking, you know, when we talked to him during the summer, he worked with, you know, some quarterback gurus, that kind of thing. And he, he's hoping to play beyond Fort Lewis College. And, and what has this year meant for Tim Jenkins? You know, it's, it's been up and down. It, we, always, we always gauge it as, are you getting better? And the answer to him is yes, he's definitely getting better. And again, he'd like the wins and the losses to be improved from, from where they were a year ago as well, but that's just not the way it's turned out. Uh, but at the same time, he's just been a great spokesperson for our program. He's been a great leader and role model uh, for our young guys to try to emulate themselves after. Um, just somebody that where everybody can go, hey, this is what a football player in the Fort Lewis College football program is supposed to be about. And when we get more players like like him to develop um, over the years, um, then, then we'll be uh, a lot more competitive. Talking with Cesar Riva Sandoval, and I know your numbers in terms of uh, players in the program way up mm -hmm. this year, and so that, that's got to be one of those things that bodes well for the future. It does. Yeah, we've had a, um, probably one of the best turnouts that, from what I hear on campus that they've ever had as far as uh, sheer numbers on the roster. But at the same time, we also wanted to be quality numbers, too. We want to be guys that um, not only are really good football players on the field, uh, but are guys that um, are great role models off the field as well. And so, um, again, sometimes that takes time as well to make sure the expectations are known uh, amongst everybody that you're recruiting and, and the retention's there from one year to the next and, and just improving upon that from year to year. Now on the defensive side of the ball, Phil O'Dell has been a great player in the RMAC last couple of years, and, and this year looks like his numbers are right up there once again. He's doing a great job. He's doing a great job. He's definitely the quarterback of the defense, and, and again, um, as, as of a revolving door that's been around him both in the secondary and at the defensive line, we'll knock on wood and make sure that he can finish off the season on a healthy note or as healthy as he possibly can at this time of the year when you're looking at week eight or nine. Um, but he's... 
he's just great. I mean, from from his leadership with the young kids um, to him in the classroom, he's an all-conference academic kid as well. Uh, he's been one of the top leading tacklers for the last four years in a row. This will be his fourth year in a row, uh, one of the top tacklers in the, in the conference. And he's just he's just a great guy, great guy, great kid, uh, great human being. Talking with Cesar Riva Sandoval from Fort Lewis. And I know this summer, Coach, I believe it was this summer, he had a chance to work with the Miami Dolphins a little bit in a, in a program. Tell us a little bit about that experience and, and what type of things you learned there. Well, that, that was just an experience of a lifetime. You know, when, when you come from um, some very small beginnings like I have and, and being able to be uh, in, in any NFL franchise, let alone the Miami Dolphins, where it seems like football was created almost, and you walk in the door and, and you see the Super Bowl trophies and everything else, it, it was an unbelievable experience. It was part of the Bill Walsh Minority Internship this summer. Um, got to go out there for OTAs and then invited back for training camp. So I was out there for, uh, for a while between June, July, and August, and it was a great experience. It's football 24-7. Um, there's a lot of things in the NFL that you don't deal with at the, from the college level, so you just do football from the time you wake up in the morning to the time you go to bed at night, and, and then you wake up and you do it all over again the next day. It was just the learning curve was, was awesome. I spent the entire time on offense, which is new for me, because I spent my entire football career coaching and playing on defense, uh, so it was a real crash course um, on the offensive side of the ball, Coach Philbin. Um, is an amazing coach. He's a great leader. I think he's a great person to lead that franchise. And then working with somebody like Mike Sherman and uh, Zach Taylor and Jeff Nixon and uh, Ken O'Keefe and all those guys on the offensive side ball, there's a lot, a lot of experience over there. And it was such a great experience to work with those guys this summer. Now, I saw Hard Knocks this year. I didn't see you on there. Did you? They, they, they cut you out or what? <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I, I only know that I was in there because uh, Doyle Bodie, one of our receivers, I think he freeze-framed one of the, uh, the first episode um, and, uh, and sent me a text with my picture on it. Uh, I was working with the quarterbacks, I think, on that day and, and uh, sent that to me as, as my, I think, my literally probably my one second of fame. Talking with Cesar Riva Sandoval, head coach at Fort Lewis. and uh, Over the years, I mean, Fort Lewis has not been a powerhouse in RMAC football necessarily, but some of the coaches, some of the players that have been through here have gone on to the next level. Gary Barnett comes to mind, who had a very you know, good career in Division One, And I know uh, Johnny Cox, who played here, wide receivers, was an assistant coach in the NFL. And I want to say there was another head coach, uh, name's escaping me now, but he was also an assistant coach. So that there's there's opportunities from Fort Lewis to move on. You know, the offense coordinator up at Boise State is former head coach of Fort Lewis College and the defense coordinator, D-line coach of the Seattle Seahawks former Fort Lewis uh, guys as well. And, and, and I've heard that a lot since I've been here. Hey, just just do what you do and move on. You know, I, I really don't try to concern myself and clutter myself with those thoughts about what's next because I really do believe in in this place. I, I love Fort Lewis College. I think it's a great place to go to school. I think as a, a, the potential here is, is endless. Uh, I really do believe as the other sports have excelled, um, there's no reason why football can't. And so for us to just try to grow the brand here and grow the program here um, from a football aspect, I think the possibilities are really here to do it. So if we can take care of business here on the field, I think all that other stuff with my future and everything else, that'll take care of itself. I just really want Fort Lewis College to be successful. Fort Lewis College at Adams State this weekend, and that's the musket game. And for those uh, folks who don't understand uh, the value of the musket, uh, I mean, this has got to be a red-letter game on your schedule, isn't it? It is. It is. Especially after uh, our first season, we, we won the musket, and it was the first time in a while. And then uh, last year, we got shelled at home um, and lost the musket. So now we're going back to Alamos, and we're hoping that the, that the visiting team, um, at, at least this year, <laughs> keeps up the tradition, at least the last couple of years, of, of winning the musket. Now, uh, to for to explain the musket, it's uh, you know the annual traveling trophy between Adams State and Fort Lewis, and I believe Adams State has, has quite a significant uh, lead over mm -hmm. Fort Lewis over the years. But uh, in years past, uh, sometimes the coaches will decide, hey, I'll let my seniors fire off that musket on the field. Sometimes they don't do it on the visiting field. Do, do you have a philosophy on, on the musket? I do. My philosophy on it is that, um, and, and no no disrespect to any coaches in the past on what their thoughts are about it, but you know, when we won the musket in 2010, our first season here, um, we, we brought it home with us and, and fired it at home. And uh, we'll always do that. We'll only fire that thing at home, whether we win it on the road or we win it at home, we'll just fire, fire it at home. 
That is Coach Cesar Rivas Sandoval. Hopes to be firing off that musket here in a couple of days. And uh, for more on what was happening in Armac football this past weekend, let's head over to Chris Poulton with our Armac recap. Thanks, Eric. New Mexico Highlands and Shadron State have taken over the title of Game of the Year. The setting, Las Vegas, New Mexico. The story, John McClain driving his team 75 yards in the closing moments of the game. McClain hit Alan Schmaltz on a 21-yard connection to overtake NMHU 36-33. That was the final as the Eagles go into Highlands and upset the Cowboys. CSU Pueblo hosting Black Hill State and showed no hangover from the previous week's win over Colorado Mines. Ross Dowson threw for 390 yards on four scores. Dowson found Marcel Williamson on two of those touchdowns. Final 45-13 pack. Mines looking to end their two-game losing streak, hosting a much-improved Colorado Mesa team, and the Ore Diggers got off the block quickly. Matt Brown would connect with Gerard Doucette for the one-yard touchdown, capping off a 72-yard drive. CSM wins 34-7. Adam State looking to get back to 500, traveling to Silver City, New Mexico, and Trevor Eggleston efficient through the air and on the ground, combining for 313 yards of offense. ASU running back Justin Judah had the biggest of games, scoring five times as the Grizz route Western New Mexico 49 to 28. A fight to get out of the cellar was had in Durango as both Fort Lewis and Western State were attempting to earn their first RMAC victory. WSC led by their running back, Jermaine Daniels, who rushed for 149 yards and one TD. The Mountaineers get their first win in conference and keep the Skyhawks winless with the 18-6 victory. I'm Chris Poulton, and that's your RMAC recap. Thank you, Chris. Our RMAC Rawlings Players of the Week, Ross Dowson from CSU Pueblo is our Offensive Player of the Week. 390 yards passing, four touchdowns as he broke several CSU Pueblo records in their big win over Black Hill State. Kiefer Burke had four quarterback sacks in Shadron State's win over New Mexico Highlands. He's our Defensive Player of the Week. Special Teams Player of the Week, also from Shadron State. Alex Ferdinand gets that award. So congratulations to our Armac slash Rawlings Players of the Week. The schedule for the upcoming week, as we mentioned, Fort Lewis traveling to Adams State Rex Field for the Musket game, 1 p.m. kickoff. Colorado Mines travels to Western State Colorado University. That's a 1 p.m. kickoff. I'll actually be at that one as the uh, Western State Hall of Fame will be this weekend, and I get a chance to MC that as uh, Josh Hotchkiss, one of their great football players, will be going into the Western State Athletics Hall of Fame. New Mexico Highlands travels to Black Hills State. That is a 1 p.m. kickoff from Lyle Hare Stadium. Western New Mexico at Shadron State. That is a 1.30 kickoff as that is homecoming for the Eagles at Don Beebe Stadium in the one night game of the week. CSU Pueblo, the number one team in the country, traveling to Colorado Mesa. That is a 6 p.m. kickoff. That does it for Armac football. When we come back, we're going to talk Armac volleyball with head coach of the Fort Lewis Skyhawks, Shelly Holland. You're listening to the Armac Radio Show. <laughs> 